it's possible that my internet at home is not so good. I'm going to greet the recording. Hi, everybody at home. Um, I am recording this review session for the solutions, acids, and bases test um, so that anybody who is um, at the field trip or whatever is not present today, present today that they, they could watch this. Um, and so the people that are here right now, feel free to interrupt me at any time. I'm just recording. Um, so if you have a question, what I'd like to do is go over the study guide for this unit. And then at the end, I have a, you don't have to play it, but just I have a Kahoot that has some of the more simple questions that are just going to show up on your test, like in like a multiple choice kind of question. Um, and so I wanted to review that thing, kind um, those things kind of like, um, what do acids taste like? And you should know that they taste sour, for example, that kind of question. Um, so I'll do that at the end. But why don't we start with the much more difficult study guide from last night. Um, and you know what? It occurs to me that I did this already, but I forgot to erase it. I did this third block. Um, so hold on. I'm going to do a couple things here really quickly. I'm going to share my camera from here. How do I do that? There we go. Tara, tell me about your test yesterday. What was your impression? Um, I think the multiple choice was easier than I expected and the FRQ was harder than I expected. Uh, interesting. And you know what? I heard some people say exactly the opposite, that they thought the FRQ was eh, and the multiple choice was was harder. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm trying to find what I was looking for here. Did you fill out, did you guys fill out my little questionnaire that I put on the announcements, just asking if there's something I could have done better to get you reviewed for it? I was going to do that after, but I looked at it. And I'm like, no rush at all. No rush at all. Okay. I am trying to share my screen and I'm having trouble. So give me just a second. Why is my screen not sharing? Okay. Squid. That was what I was looking for. I had to do a window, not a, I had to do a window, not a, um, not a tab. Okay. So I already did this with um, my other group. So I'm just going to really quickly go through here and see if I can erase, uh, make it as big an eraser as I can and get that out of the way. Um, so this is our study guide from, um, for this unit. So I don't, I don't know who has completed the study guide or what you have or haven't done. Um, I just know that sometimes students looking at the answer key isn't enough, that they don't know why I did certain things. And so it helps to hear what I was thinking. I'm not going to do every single problem, but at least you can see what problems. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do this. All right. Um, come on. Go through and erase. So the beginning of this study guide starts with just simple molarity. And I want everybody, when you think of molarity, to think of moles over liters. And that helps with all the other problems that are a little bit more tricky on this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch and make, and that looks good. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. So 1.75 molarity for this, or molar for this um, potassium chromate solution, and it's 13.1 liters. So when I see the capital M, even if it's not appropriate right at this moment, I still kind of write down, okay, that means 1.75 moles in one liter. Like I have that in the back of my head the whole time. In this case, it's a real basic problem. So it is what we're trying to do. 1.75 moles of potassium chromate in one liter is equal to, and what we don't know is how many moles there would be in 13.1 liters. And then we just solve for X. Most of you can do that pretty quickly um, just by getting X by itself. Some of you know how to cross multiply. So you can do 13.1 times 1.75 divided by 1 gives you the answer. Um, but if you like to isolate X, that works perfectly. And that answer should have been 22.9. The next one is exactly the same problem. The only difference is that you have milliliters, and so you would want to change that into liters. So it would be 0.15 liters um, instead of um, 150 milliliters. But other than that, it's exactly the same problem. Interrupt me at any time if you have any questions about this. All right, the next one, how many grams? So here we go. We're looking for grams, but we've been talking about moles over liters. So this is 
moles in one liter. So when I see grams, I'm thinking my mole roadmap right now that I'm probably going to have to use the mole roadmap. I'm going to have to do those conversions. So how many grams of glucose are needed to make 225 milliliters of a 6.5 molar glucose solution? So let's go ahead and start the way I always say, do a 6.5 moles over one liter is equal to how many moles, I don't know, in a 0.225 um, liter solution. And so I'm now I'm gonna solve for X. And again, I can cross multiply, or if you prefer to multiply both sides, so 0.225 liters, that cancels them out. And then I could do 0.225 liters over here. And that, sol that gives me what X is, and in this case, X is 1.46 moles. And what they asked for was grams. So now I have moles of glucose. And now I'm gonna draw a line and I'm gonna put moles of glucose on the bottom. I'm just gonna write glue. And I'm gonna put grams of glucose on the top. Oops, glucose. On your test tomorrow, um, just because we only have 45 minutes to take the test, any time that you have to calculate um, atomic mass, I'm just going to give you the atomic mass so that you don't have to spend the time adding up six C's and 12 H's and whatever. It'll go a little bit faster. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to round it off, but our atomic mass is around 180. And whenever you have grams across from moles, it's always one mole. The only time we get to use um, different numbers, remember, is if it's moles over moles. So we solve that ca cancels out the moles of glucose, and we're left with the unit grams of glucose. And in this case, we ended up with about 263 grams of glucose for that. Anybody have any questions about that before I move on? Feel free to shout out anything. All right, this next one, we're going to start with, um, so it says aluminum sulfate reacts with calcium hydroxide in a double replacement reaction. The balanced equation, blah, blah, blah. How many liters of, and I want you to pay attention, aluminum sulfate are needed to react with grams of calcium hydroxide. We have different elements here, different, um, they're not elements, we have different molecules here. Um, so we're going to actually have to do stoichiometry. We're going to have to do a moles to moles step so that we can go from one substance into another substance. Um, so in this case, I'm going to start, I, I'm in the back of my head, I know that this is 3.75 moles in one liter. Like I always have that in my brain. But I always tell you, write down what you're given, and you're given two things here, and that's tricky. So this one I'm going to put on the back shelf, the 3.75, and I'm going to start by writing out the 48.9 grams of, what is it, calcium hydroxide. I'm just going to write calcium dot, 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 so that I don't have to keep writing it out every time. All right, so then I'm going to do a conversion. Um, whenever I have grams, I'm going to put grams on the bottom and moles on the top calcium dot 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 and whenever it's grams across from moles it's always just one mole so I'm going to make one mole and then the grams would be the atomic mass so I would get that from the periodic table I'm giving it to you this time and it is roughly remember that I usually want you to go to two de um, decimals um, but today just to hurry we're not going to have too many decimals so I'm going to say 74 is our mass so I have gotten rid of grams of calcium, but now I'm a calcium hydroxide, but now I'm in moles of calcium hydroxide and it asked for aluminum sulfate. So I have one more conversion step. I need to get into moles of aluminum sulfate. So I'm gonna put moles of calcium hydroxide on the bottom and I'm gonna put moles of aluminum hydroxide, I'm sorry, aluminum sulfate on the top. And now this is where I do the old moles to moles. Look at the coefficients. So Al2 has a coefficient of one that's just not written. Um, so I'm going to put one there. And then the calcium hydroxide has a coefficient of three. So I'm going to put a three down here. Notice that my units are canceling out. And I'm going to be left with moles of Al2. I'm going to stop and I'm just going to calculate this out right now. Al2SO43. So I would do 48.9 times 1 times 1 duh, divided by, and then just make sure you have your parentheses, 74 times 3, close parentheses, enter. 
Um, and you should get up for moles of aluminum, we get, give me a second, 0 0.220, whatever, it doesn't matter, um, roughly that many moles um, of aluminum hydroxide. So now the question said, how many liters of a 3.75 molar aluminum sulfate, um, how many liters of that solution are needed to react with that? So we know that we need this many moles of aluminum sulfate. So how many liters is that? So that's where we set up that equation that we did in problems one and two. So we just do 3.75, that's from here. Moles are in one liter. So if I need 2.20 moles, how many liters do I need? That's what the question is asking for. So again, we've got to isolate X. That's a little bit trickier when the X is on the bottom. For those of you that know how to cross multiply, it's just 0 0.220 times one divided by 3.75 gives you the answer. If you don't know how to cross multiply, then you need to put X, you need to multiply both sides by X. That cancels X out and now X is on the left at the top. And now I can go ahead and solve, um, I can divide both sides by 0 0.220 and, and solve for it that way. And um, and divide by 3.75. So 3.75 on this side and point, sorry, 3.75 on this side. So 0 0.220 divided by 3.75 would give me X in that circumstance. The right answer for this one was 0 0.0587. And that would be the liters. That's how many liters they need, which is the same as 58.7 milliliters. You could scooch the decimal over, but you don't have to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and erase. Is there any question before I erase? Okay. Shout out if you're, it, it, you can always type in the chat, but I don't always see the chat. Um, so just a quick shout out works better for me. Okay. I'm going to switch colors just to make it stand out a little bit. Um, write the dissociation equation for vinegar. So first of all, I just want you to notice yesterday we came up with, um, a general formula for an acid, acids always have an H followed by an ion. So we know that this, we know that vinegar, even if you didn't already know it, we know that vinegar is an acid because it's got that H first and it's going to donate that H. So it's going to, whoops, helps if I have a pen going. So you're going to start with an H, um, HCH3COO. And it will break into a hydrogen ion. It's going to donate a hydrogen ion. And then it's going to be left with the CH3COO. And because we lost, remember, a hydrogen ion is the same thing as a proton. So it took away a positive charge. And so therefore, it has overall um, what's left behind has a negative charge. If they came back together again, which they can, um, it would form the neutral molecule for um, vinegar again. So that's called the dissociation of an acid. All right, um, moving on, we'll try one more new color here. Let's try orange. Um, aniline is a weak base. The reaction is shown below. Which definition does this base fit? The Arrhenius um, definition of a base or the Bronsted-Lowry definition of a base? I will ask you to recognize Bronsted-Lowry um, acid and base definitions, but I'm not going to have you compare it necessarily to Arrhenius. Um, so you just need to know that acids, Bronsted-Lowry said acids donate. Um, it, they donate protons and H pluses or H pluses and that bases accept H pluses. Arrhenius said that they um, they produce OH, they produce hydroxides, the bases produce hydroxides, but we know that there's more bases out there than just ones that have hydroxide in them. Um, so that's why that definition is a little too small. So we need to, to open that up. So in this case, which one is the base? Um, so this is the base here, and you can see that it accepted a hydrogen. So that is an example of a Bronsted-Lowry base. It doesn't have hydroxide, um, so that's why it's a Bronsted-Lowry base. And then um, number seven says HCl is classified as a monoprotic acid. H2SO4 is diprotic and H3PO4 is triprotic. What do those terms mean? It just means the number of hydrogens that they can donate. So HCl can donate one because it only has one hydrogen. H2SO4 can donate two and H3PO4 can donate three. If we were gonna write them out, so here's the H3PO4. 
when it first donates a proton, it's going to have left behind H2PO4, but remember it lost a positive charge, so it's going to have a negative left behind. Um, for the next one, it would donate the next, so then you would have HPO4, and now we have a negative two charge, so the charge is going down with every lost proton, and then the last one would just be PO4, and we would be a minus three in that circumstance. All right, can I move on? Any questions? Just jump in if you're like, what? No idea what you're talking about. Okay, the next four problems, they all look like they're exactly the same, but each one is subtly different. And so it's important that we kind of talk through all of them. Um, remember just really basically that the pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Um, molarity means, or it can be written as like this. That's concentration of, it's written in brackets. Um, so whenever you see the molarity, that's what goes in the brackets. So in this case, we would do negative log, and then we would put the number in here, 0 0.075. Now that's an easy one. Some of them are written um, 6.2 times 10 to the negative 5 or something like that. Still the same number, just negative log of that in the brackets. Um, and that gives you the answer. And so the pH in this one, really straightforward. Here, give me, let me pull up my answer key so I know it since I'm not typing it in. Um, is about a rounded off to a 1.1. Um, the next one, however, is a little bit more complicated because you need to notice that it is a base and not an acid. So when we calculate, when we do the negative log, um, what we've calculated is the pOH, and then we have to subtract that from 14 to figure out the, the pH. Um, because remember, pOH plus pH equals 14. So because it's a base, we'll do negative log, just like we did the last one, 0.075, and we're going to get 1.1, but that is our pOH because it's a base. Um, so then we do 14 minus it, and we would get, what, 12.9 is our pH for that one. All right, and then the next two, what's the what's the only thing that's different about the next two problems? What makes the next two problems a little bit trickier? Not tricky, but just you got to pay attention. Anybody? If nobody answers, it's okay. I should switch colors here. Um, so what's important here is that they are diproduct and diproduct and triproduct um, acids. And so they're going to donate more than just one hydrogen ion. So this time you take the 0 0.075, but you multiply it by two because it's going to donate two hydrogens every time. And this one would be the negative log of 0 0.075 times three. And I'm not going to go through the details. Because they're both acids, the pH is the pH, and we're done. We don't have to subtract it from 14 or anything like that. All right, um, next, let's try, what's a nice color? Navy blue. What is the concentration of an HCl solution if its pH is 3? So this is where we have to do the opposite. They gave us the pH. Now we have to figure out what the concentration or molarity is. So this is where we do the anti-log, the opposite of log. Um, so that is, you would enter that into your calculator. It, Everybody's calculator is a little bit different, but the anti-log, and then you have to remember the negative sign. That is so easy to forget. So negative 3.0, it depends how your calculator does it. It is the same as 10 to the negative 3.0. That would be the same thing. Um, and so you have to enter it in your calculator that way. And you would get, where are we, num number 12? So 0 0.001 would be the right answer on that one. Um, and then the next one, of course, is different because it's an, oh, oh, it's actually not different. It is a base, but they gave us POH. So they gave us in the correct way. Um, so we just do normal um, anti-log of 10 to the negative um, 2.5 um, or anti-log of negative 2.5 is the right way to say it. And it's the same as 10 to the negative 2.5. Um, and so that gives us a concentration. And in this case, the concentration is 3.16 times 10 to the negative 3.16 times 10 to the negative 3. And the unit on that is molar. That's Well, that's the unit of concentration is molar. So you want a capital M for molar. 
on that. Stop me if I'm going too fast. Trying to make sure that we get the review in, in in the 45 minutes of class time so we don't have to go any longer. All right. Um, what is the concentration of an NaOH, a sodium hydroxide solution, if its pH is 10.6? Okay, so they're tricking us here because they gave us pH and not pOH. So now the first step is to get it into pOH. So the first thing we're going to do is 14 minus 10.6. And what is that? 3.4? Did I do that right? Yeah, 3.4 is the pOH, and now we can do the anti-log of negative, you got to add that negative in there, 3.4, or the same as 10 to the negative 3.4, and the answer is 3.98 times 10 to the negative 4. And then remember the unit is molarity, so molar in that case. All right, um, now those are kind of kind of the easier problems. Let's go to somewhat more complicated. This definitely, this type of problem is definitely on the test. Um, what color should I use now, everybody? Let's go with, no orange, no, let's go with green. Okay, whatever. Um, a bottle of HNO3, so nitric acid, notice it's an acid because it has an H in the front, has a concentration of 1.55 blah, blah, molar. A beaker of that acid containing 750 mils, I'm thinking 0 0.750 liters, of the solution is diluted to 1.25 liters. What is the pH of the diluted acid? Show your work. So again, when I think of molarity, um, when I see that 1.55, I am thinking 1.55 times 10 to the negative 2 moles over 1 liter. That's what this means. And that's going to be helpful. So right now, I need to know how many moles is that if we have only 750 milliliters of it. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, if I had one liter of it, then I had 1.55 times 10 to the negative two moles. Now I have less, so I should have fewer moles. So when I do this calculation, I should end up with a number that's a little bit less. Cross multiply, I don't care how you do it, but in the end, you end up with X being, I have a really, a really long one written on the on the answer key, and that's because we don't usually round until the very end, um, until your last step. So we have that many moles in 750 or 0.75 liters. Um, so now we want to add water to that. Um, and for some reason, I've got a little annoying thing that just jumped in. I don't know what code 42 is. Can I make that go away? Will it drag away? There we go. I made it go away. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys could even see it, but the uh, annoying little pop-up showed up on my screen just now. Okay. So we had it in um, 0 0.750 liters, but now we're going to add water to it. So imagine that we made Kool-Aid and it's perfect. And now somebody dumps in another, you know, several milliliters of um, water, it's going to dilute it. It's still the same amount of Kool-Aid, um, like sugar and flavors, um, but now it's diluted. It's not as much water in it. I mean, it's more water in it. Um, so we're going to take that same mole, so 0 0.011625, and this time we're going to put it in 1.25 liters. So here it is, 1.25 liters. So all we need to do is divide it to get the molarity. So you would enter that into your calculator, 0 0.011625 divided by 1.25, and you would get molarity. And in this case, the right answer was 9.3 times 10 to the negative 3 molar solution. And then it asks, what is the pH? And I'm just going to double check and make sure that it was an acid and not a base. Yep. HNO3 is an acid. Um, so what I'm going to calculate is the pH on the first try. So we do negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, 9.3 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. And when I calculate that out, I get a pH of, I rounded it off, I think, for significant figures. So 2.0, but yours should be somewhere in that ballpark. So 2.0 would be our pH. Okay, and then um, the next problem is done exactly the same way, only the next problem, I'm not going to do it, but the next problem is a base. 
So when you calculate your pH at the end, you've actually calculated the pOH, and then they are asking for the pH. So you have to um, subtract it from 14 to make sure that you have the pH and not the pOH. Any questions about 15 and 16? Anybody have a question about it? And I think that's the last question on that page, which is awesome. Um, and now I think the last page is the easier problems. These are the titration problems where it's just MAVA MIVVIB. So I want you to remember what that means. There we go. MA is the molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid is equal to the molarity of the base times the volume of the base. Um, in this first problem, we have 28 milliliters. Now, can you use milliliters? Yes, as long as the other volume is also in milliliters. But if one is in milliliters and one is in liters, then you need to convert them to be the same. You might be like me and just get into the habit of always writing milliliters as liters. So you could write um, instead of 28 milliliters, you could write 0 0.028 liters if that feels more comfortable. Um, but because they're both in milliliters, because this is in milliliters and this is in milliliters, we don't need to do any conversion. So in this one, um, they've given us the concentration of the base and they've given us the volume of the base. But what we're looking for is the concentration of the acid. So what we don't have is ma. We do have its volume, which is um, two zero milliliters. And then we have the um, milliliters of, I'm sorry, we have the molarity of the base, which it looks like is, I can't read it on my thing. I drew on top of it. Is it 0.75? I can't tell. There we go, 0.75. I just erased a bunch of things. Come back. There we go. Okay, so 0.75. Equals 0.75 molar times the volume in this case is um, 28 milliliters. And then we solve for MA. We get MA by itself. Just reminding you, divide both sides by 20. They cancel out and MA is by itself. And so this is what you calculate. 0.75 times 28 divided by 20 would give you the... Um, would give you the molarity of the acid, the concentration of the acid that they're looking for. All right, and then number 18, I think is exactly the same. I don't think anything is tricky about 18. Number 19, the difference is that you have a diprotic acid. Um, and because it's just multiplication on the mava mivvib side, it doesn't matter where you um, multiply. But in this case, um, for number 19, um, you would do, so let me just see here really quickly, it's the acid is one molar, so we're going to have one molar, times 150 mils, and then because it's diprotic, you're going to do times two. I don't care where you put that times two. If it makes you happier to do times two in this parentheses, do it that way. Um, order of operations says they're all going to get multiplied together anyway, so it doesn't matter when you do it. Then the other side is just the um, mibvib part where you don't need to, um, you, you, you don't have to worry about multiplying it by two or anything. If it were a base like calcium hydroxide, just saying CaOH2, um, then you would need to multiply the base side by two. But I don't think I'm going to give you a problem like that. It's a little bit tricky. We'll see. But I don't think I'll give you a problem like that. Um, so then the next one is also diproduct. And then the last one is triproduct. So in that case, you would do 12 times three um, times its volume and whatever. Okay. Are there any questions about the worksheet itself? Does anybody have any questions about the study guide? I just want to show you the Kahoot really quickly. I don't know. I got to see how much time we have. We're doing good. I was trying to get this done in 45 minutes. So I thought we could look at the Kahoot here really well, um, really quickly. Are there any questions about any of the problems that I did? If you're, if you're quiet, I'm going to assume you're okay. Okay. I'm just going to glance at the Kahoot. I wish that, um, I wish that we could play the Kahoot. I had it all ready to go and that's not going to happen. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to stop presenting from this computer and I am going to present from this one. A tab and my Kahoot. And I'm just going to fly through it really quickly. 
and get us out of here within 45 minutes. Um, I'm going to start kind of in the middle of it. And then depending on how much time we have, I'm going to go back to the beginning of it. Um, will you shout at me if you have any questions, like actually verbally talk to me because I'm not seeing you right now. So if you have a question, you have to get on the microphone and say, hey, KJ, could you explain that or whatever. Um, so this first question, I wish that we could play this, but the first question says, oh, actually, I want this one. We're going to start with number 16. Come on. Now it's frozen. There we go. I'm going to blow this up big. So the question says, consider equation A, which one is the acid? So you've got NO2 negative plus H2O, and it makes HNO2 and OH negative. So remember the definition of an acid is that it donates a hydrogen. So which one on the left, which of the reactants is getting rid of a hydrogen? And in this case, it would be the water. And so the water is donating a hydrogen. So it disappeared and now it's just OH minus. So the water is the acid in that example. Now, if we look at the same sheet and it says consider equation B, which one is the base? So remember the definition of a base is that it accepts protons or it accepts hydrogens. So the one that is doing the accepting is again the water. It's accepting and becoming H3O+. Plus. Um, so that's um, the sign that it's a base in that case. All right, um, number 18. Trying to get it. It doesn't click very quickly, unfortunately. What's interesting about H2PO4 minus in equations D and E? What's interesting about it in D and E? You can almost guess what it's going to be. So here's the H2PO4, and now it becomes HPO4. So that means it donated a hydrogen. So that means it's an acid in equation D. And here's H2PO4, the same molecule, but now it accepts a proton. So that means it's a base. So just like water can do both um, this example of um, H2. So this is um, phosphoric acid can do both. It can, it can donate or can receive depending on the situation. So it says in equation D, it's an acid and it's a base in equation E. All right, number 19, what does pH, oh, and let me just back up really quickly. The reason I'm showing you this Kahoot is that there are some questions on the test that are like multiple choice questions. They're not like math questions. And so I just want to make sure that you feel comfortable with kind of all the concepts, not just how to solve the problems. Okay, so what does pH really measure? It is the concentration of the hydrogen ions. POH would be the concentration of the hydroxide ions. Um, okay, next one. More than one possible answer. Solution X has pH 3 and solution Y has pH 5. And I'm sorry that you can automatically see the answers. It would have been more fun to play it. But which one is true? And the answer is that solution X has more hydrogen ions than solution Y does. Um, the higher the hydrogen ion concentration, the lower the pH. So remember, it's an inverse relationship, and it goes either direction. So the higher the, um, the, higher the hydrogen ion concentration, the lower the pH. All right, um, same picture, still talking about solution X, and it has a pH 3, and Y has a pH of 6. What's the difference? And so just reminding you that each whole number step on the pH scale is logarithmic. And so the, or exponential is another way of saying it. Um, so it's a times 10 relationship. So going from three to four is 10 times more concentrated or less concentrated, depending which direction you're going. Um, three to five would be a 20 times difference. And three to six is a one. I'm sorry, I said 20. Let me see it again. Three to four is 10 time difference. Three to five is a hundred times difference, 10 times 10. And three to six is a 1,000 times difference, 10 times 10 times 10. All right, hopefully that I hopefully I didn't make it more complicated than by misspeaking. Okay, what is the conjugate base of H2CO3? So it's got H's, it's probably going to be donating H's, and that makes sense. Um, so whatever it turns into, that's its conjugate base once it donates um, a 
proton. So in that case, of course, it's going to be HCO3. And then don't forget, um, because it lost a proton, it's going to have an overall extra negative charge because it lost a proton, an extra electron. All right. And then another word for a hydrogen ion is a proton. That's another word for it. Hopefully that's clear. We're almost to the end, and then I'm going to start back at the top. Um, bases have low hydrogen ion concentration and high pH. There's that inverse relationship again. And then the last, I think this is the last question. A solution has pH 3.7. Taking the antilog of negative 3.7 gives you, and then the right answer is the molarity of the hydrogen ions. Um, so just... When you're doing the anti-log, that gives you the concentration. Okay, let's go back to the top really quickly and then we'll be done. So up at the top, some kind of easy questions, but I want to make sure you don't miss a question or two on the test just because they were, because I ignored them. Um, acidic foods are sour in flavor. Basic foods are bitter. You can skip this one. Um, bases like NaOH dissociate. They break apart in water. Um, and they release hydroxide ions. So that's what NaOH does. And then Arrhenius, I'm not that concerned about Arrhenius, um, but Arrhenius acids dissociate in water to produce hydrogen ions, which is pretty much what Bronsted-Lowry says. They say they donate hydrogen ions. Pretty close to the same difference. All right. Um, and then um, which statement describes a base? Bases are slippery, and we find them in a lot of our cleaning products like bleach and soap. Those would be bases. Which of the following is an example of lemon juice? It's an acid. During neutralization, which is what we do with titration, where we add an acid and a base until it gets to the color is neutral, um, that's a titration reaction. And so when an acid and a base come together, they neutralize to make water. Those H's and those OH's that are being released come together and make water. And then there's some other ionic compounds. So um, oftentimes it's salt. We made salt water when we did hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. Um, but it could be a different, um, a different ionic compound also. All right, methylamine. This is methylamine. Even if you didn't know it, this is water. So this is your only choice. This must be methylamine. Um, and it is an example of, and we're looking for whether it's an acid or a base. So I'm going to look on the other side of the arrow and I see that it has gained a hydrogen. Even if I don't know for sure what I'm talking about, it's gained a hydrogen. So therefore it is a base. Number nine, I want the molarity of an HCl, of the HCl I have in a bottle. I do a titration with um, three molar NaOH. Which equation should I use? Of course, that's Mava Midvib. Um, if a solution has a pH of 13, that means that it's got lots of hydroxide ions and not very many hydrogen ions. We kind of talked about that already. If a solution has a pH of seven, it is considered to be neutral. So that's um, equal numbers of OH and H in that case. Um, what type of chemical is found in many household cleaners? That's a base. That's why they feel, lots of them feel slippery. In water or any aqueous solution, multiplying the hydroxide concentration, I'm sorry, the hydrogen ion concentration by the hydroxide ion concentration, this might be one you're not real clear on. It would have been in the readings. Um, you get an answer of one times 10 to the negative 14 if you multiply them together. Um, they're always kind of balanced out. And they, if you multiply them together, you get one times 10 to the negative 14. All right. And then you've got four statements, which one is true. And of course, in this case, the bases are the hydrogen ion acceptors. They're the hydrogen ion acceptors. All right. And then we're almost at the end. I'm going to stop in like three minutes. What is the pH of a solution with a hydrogen ion concentration of one times 10 to the negative 12? This one's pretty straightforward because 12 is a whole number. Um, so we know that its pH is 12. If it was 12.1, then we need to do a little math to figure that out because it's a logarithmic scale. It's not super obvious what the pH would be. All right. Um, and I guess we're back to the beginning already. So we are done. Um, does anybody have any questions for me before we shut her down? Okay. Um, that's it, everybody. Let me know if you have any questions. Have an awesome day.
forget how to shut down. How do I stop my recording? There we go. I got it.